Hey, let's get ready for some basketball. Hopefully the Billikens non-conference season gets underway. Play a few games at least before the Atlantic 10 comes around. Billikens have a loaded roster, really a deep team. You've heard us all talk about it. Now all there's left to do is to go out and play the games. And this conversation, the Kilquin conversation, is with Hassan French, the Billikens' four-year starter, big emerging force there, the power forward who's already the school's all-time blocks leader, averaged a double-double a year ago. And when you mentioned to him that he's on the second team, Atlantic 10, preseason pick to make the second team, that's a slight to him. It does motivate him, not on the first team. That bothers Hassan French. He's honest about it. Also can't wait for the Billikens to make some noise in the tournament to see SLU make a deep run. Hopefully there's a tournament and they make it past first couple of games. That would be exciting for Travis Ford, the entire team. So Hassan French talking about his season ahead, what could be a great year for the Billikens. Also the Carl Malone uh, list that he's on for the top power forward. It's second year in a row he's on that list. I was curious. Does a guy Hassan's age even know who Carl Malone is? It turns out he's well aware of the mailman. And also some tough times when the uh, pandemic shut down the season last March. Billiken players headed home. Hassan French went back to the New York area, and uh, his grandmother came down with COVID. Hassan himself had the coronavirus. Big, strong guy, said he could barely walk for a while, battled through it, and then his grandmother, who he was extremely close to, uh, ended up dying from COVID-19. What that experience was like, not even be able to see her uh, as she was going through this in the hospital. So Billiken fans, basketball fans, Here's a chance to talk at length here, a little more in depth than we normally get to. Hassan French is the latest topic with the Kilcoin Conversation, which is presented to you by Appliance Discounters. Four area locations. You can get them online at theappliancediscounters.com. All the GE products that you need in your home, in your kitchen, in your, well, where, where do you keep your washer and dryer? I was going to say your bathroom. Ours happens to be next to our bathroom. GE, just search it when you go to theappliancediscounters.com. Get the best merchandise at the lowest prices. Also, Marie Villa Senior Living. They're at the corner of Clayton and Weidman Road. So when you're ready to start thinking about senior living, maybe it's even for your parents, your relatives, get online, take a virtual tour at mariedevilla.com. Also, Triad Bank, that's a St. Louis-based bank since 2005. If you're a business owner, make sure you're talking to Jim Regna and his team have them help you get some business done here in town. They're the decision makers right here in St. Louis. They're on Clayton Road, just about a block west of Lindbergh, right off of Highway 40. They're in Frontenac. Also on the web, it's triadbanking.com. We appreciate our great sponsors. Also, Hassan French for taking some time to talk basketball with us today. Give me an idea, Hassan, just kind of how anxious you guys are. I know we got an A-10 schedule. The other one will be coming Mm -hmm. soon. But just to kind of know the seasons around the corner and just – have it all kind of in place. How anxious are you guys to get this season rolling? We're really excited. Um, we talk about it each and every day. We're ready to go. It's, it's different when you play in against each other each uh, each and every day. It doesn't get boring, but it's kind of like you get familiar. Kind of uh, now we're at the point where we want to take it out on someone else. Um, but we're all excited and ready to go. And in terms of the season itself, are you guys fingers crossed that everything's going to be normal and or as close to normal as we can get? Yeah, we pray that everything is as normal as, as can be. Um, uh, we we see each and every day there's different things that go on with, you know, other teams and people getting sick. So it's kind of uh, rough seeing how, you know, other people's seasons are going. So we're just trying to, you know, stick to ourselves and stay with our team to make sure that we stay away from getting sick so we can have a regular season. Is there any frustration knowing how good your team can be? Like, hey, we want a, we want a normal or I keep saying that that's the wrong word, but we want to have a full season so we can do what we're capable of. Is there any concern right. or frustration about it? All this going on at a time when you guys are loaded. Uh, we're not really worried about that. Um, I, I, I know I would be frustrated if something happened like that. Like if something happened as far as what happened to Dayton last year, um, I definitely would, would, would be, you know, sad and down about that. But as far as right now, I'm not really thinking about that too much. I'm thinking about, you know, going into wherever game we play, wherever it is and, you know, dominating and doing what it takes to, to, to win. What are the goals here? I mean, you look at all the players returning, a team that was trending up into last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're getting some national buzz. How good do you think this team could be? Our team could be very good. Um, we just have to, you know, come together, um, continue making great strides as we're doing each and every day, um, 
And as long as we keep doing that and coming in, knowing what we need to do to be successful. And um, I think it just takes that first test against another team to show what we can do and what we can be. Um, and we're ready for it. I see that, you know, we're battle tested and we, we test each other each and every day. we got a great veteran team and um, we can do a lot of great things. You think teams will be targeting you, especially in the A-10? They know how good you guys are. Are you expecting everyone's yeah. best? Yeah, towards the end of the season, we actually had a, a, a great uh, a great se season towards the end. Um, we had a great season all around, but um, for sure, teams are definitely going to target us and come after us. And we still are the defending champs. Um, so people are still going to come after us. And, you know, we're going to have a target on our back. We're not coming in and, and flying under the radar anymore. You're on the Carl Malone preseason watch list. I think the A-10 put you on their second team. But you've got higher goals than that, don't you? You're, you're For able sure. For sure. Um, what goes for myself is player of the year. I don't come in thinking uh, I'm going to be second team or anything like that. I actually use that as fuel to the fire. Um, uh, and just, you know, I know what I can do and what I'm capable of. So just can't wait for the season to start. So even though people are buzzing about you, guys like Michael Jordan always would find some kind of thing to get a chip. Is that so the fact they put you on the second team, does that will you you'll use that as motivation? For sure. For sure. I'll use that as motivation and and uh, I'll use that each and every day to, you know, keep me pushing. Um, I kind of, I'm kind of one of those guys. I really don't need much motivation. I have a lot of things that motivate me each and every day. So um, I'm already motivated and ready to go. Um, and I'm just excited to play. So on the Carl Malone watch list, how familiar with the mailman are you? I know you're younger. You probably don't remember his career, uh, but that's still, that's a pretty good honor to be in that company. Yeah, for sure. I, I definitely uh, watch, watch a lot of film and I watched him a lot. Um, he's a great player. Um, and I definitely appreciate that um, for being one of the candidates. As, even if, as I, I was on it last year um, and, you know, Obi Toppin winning it and things like that, I, I think I have a great, chance of uh coming out and winning it this year if i continue uh you know progressing and having a great season um all i gotta do is just go out and dominate and i know i can win that award for sure you got a little flavor of the ncaa your sophomore year after the big run in brooklyn what do you mm -hmm. want to do as a team because slu has been in the tournament the last 30 years you know here and there they're in it but they've won a game here and there but what's the goal team wise this year we want to go far in the tournament it's different from just making it we don't want to just oh we made it to the tournament um, and I feel like that was one of the things that we did when we went to the tournament and played at Virginia Tech. We made it, but we lost the first game. We want to go in and, and, and you know, win some games and contend for a championship. So, And you're a big, strong guy, but you, you could tell folks what COVID can do. How rough was yeah. that stretch for you? Oh, it was definitely rough. Um, it, it definitely uh, tests your body. Um, it put me at a point where it was hard for, for me to walk and things like that. I had to start slow, uh, walking again, and then getting into jogging and running and doing push-ups and things like that. Um, but I, I, I tested my body, and um, I'm happy that I'm actually better now than I was last year um, as far as conditioning. So I'm, I'm happy about that. Do, do you see young people kind of cavalier about it? And do you try and tell them, hey, this is real? Or does it ever bother yeah. you when you see people saying, oh, it's not a big deal? Yeah, for sure. Um, sometimes, you know, I get annoyed with sometimes people are just careless and out just living their lives like, you know, like there's no tomorrow. Um, but it is something that is very serious and we have to take this very serious because um, each and every day people are losing family members. And I've lost a family member um, to COVID and even having it myself. It's something that's real and we have to, you know, take the, the right precautions to make sure that we can stop it. Your grandmother was near and dear to you. It's a period, too, where everybody's kind of in shutdown mode. It had to make it even harder because the hospitals were restricted. And give me an idea how tough that was for you and your family. Uh, they're definitely probably one of the, the most toughest points uh, of my life that I've uh, been a part right now. Um, it definitely was rough on the family, um, not being able to go in and see my grandmother until she passed away. And even at that point, uh, we had to go in one by one into the room to see her after she passed. So it was definitely something that was very rough and still rough each and every day. But um, that's just, you know, what I try to tell everybody that it's real and we have to, you know, do what it takes. How much have you thought about this season being in her honor and 
and tell people a little bit about the role she played in your life. Uh, yeah, my grandmother, she she played every role. She was mother, father, uh, grandmother, everything, uh, motivator. Um, she 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 was a walking superhero. Um, she she really she was the, the center of my of my life. Um, she helped raise me. Um, I lived with her growing up, even through high school. I became, I became a, a top player in the country. I was living with her and uh, I was just happy she was able to see me grow and progress um, in my game. Um, and she was able to watch every college game online and she would try to find it. Um, she wasn't able to come to any games, but she, she was actually able to um, just watch them online. And she, she just played a major role in my life. And, you know, this year is definitely dedicated to her. And I'm just happy she, she's, over, she, she's over me and she's watching over me. Well, a lot's happened since last offseason came to an abrupt end. That included you checking in with the NBA. What did they tell you? What did you hear back? I mean, this year is a hard year for anyone to – leap to the pros with the draft being delayed but what, what feedback did you get what did they tell you about your game um they just told me a lot of things um that they just want to really see how self-aware you are um seeing how self-aware you are of your game what what you think you need to work on um what strengths you think you have um they know a lot about you already um they gave me a lot of good feedback um i got feedback that i i need going into this season as far as uh parts of my game that um, I need to expand on or things I just need to continue doing um, as far as, you know, working hard and scoring the ball more, making sure I'm rebounding the ball. Um, also free throws, making sure knocking those down, which um, I have been. Um, and the feedback that I got, I felt like, you know, helped my game to the point I'm at now. And all I can do is keep progressing from there. You are the school's all-time blocks leader. Give me an idea. A great swat into the seats or a great dunk? What's more fun? Mm, I say a dunk. It adds points on the on the scoreboard and uh, helps us get ahead. So I'll definitely say a dunk um, each and every time. But a block definitely energizes me and it energizes the team. How much do you and Jordan look at your careers kind of simultaneous, came in together, going out together? How much of you guys – well, we think of you as the Billiken duo. How about for you guys? And then on Javante, who came into the mix too, this right. senior group here, how close are you? Uh, we're very close. Um, uh, we talk about it each and every day. Uh, as far as me and Jordan, uh, we want to we, we want to do great things this year for the school. And uh, we just hope for one day, you know, our jerseys to be up in the rafters amongst some of the great players that are out there. Um, and this is things that we talked about even before we came. So, um, just to see it happening and everything unfolding is great. You know, we followed the plan that we thought of things that could happen for the school, and we just we, we want to see it through. So that's what this year is about, seeing everything through. You got a lot of scores. I wonder, it's great to have a guy like Yuri who doesn't try and score. I mean, here's a guy who <laughs> 12 assists in one shot. Right. I wonder, right. did he ever catch you off guard? Because, I mean, he will fling that thing, and you better be ready. Yeah, sometimes he'll catch you off guard. If not, it'll be in your chin if, you, if you, you're not paying attention. <laughs> All right, so four years, this is hard to believe. It's flying by. Give me an idea what the SLU experience has been like, but also tell us, St. Louis folks, coming from the New York area, uh, what have you liked around town? What have you been able to do? I know it's been weird the last you know, handful of months, but yeah. where, where in St. Louis have you uh, hung out or any discoveries, any favorite spots? Well, the first thing that I noticed when I came here was the food. Uh, the food here in St. Louis is kind of like you know country-style um you know type of food and I actually like that um and that that kind of was a thing that that was a main point to me like these, these people can cook out here it's actually good food and uh you know it's a slower pace from New York um everything's pretty much slowed down and it's, it's definitely a different world from New York but I mean uh that's kind of what I needed uh for college I needed everything to be very calm and um uh, for me to be able to focus on just basketball in school. And I was happy that I got that experience here at SLU. Yeah, and did the SLU experience everything you expected? That Coach Ford yeah. promised you? Yeah, for sure. Um, we, we definitely uh, got more than we expected um, going to the NCAA tournament. I knew I, wanted, I was going to win a championship because uh, we talked about doing those things. But even this year, this year will, you know, exceed every year that uh, I've been here. All right, last one. I've asked Hargrove and Jimerson. I think I've asked Jay Good. Coach Ford, to me, seems like the perfect balance where he will scream at you, and the next <laughs> day he might laugh with you. Give me an idea what it's like playing with him. 
Yeah, he's one of those coaches. He'll get on you. He'll go crazy for about 10 seconds. And then the next 10 seconds, he he forgot about what happened. So he's one of those guys that uh, you you love to play with him because he doesn't care what happened. It's just about what you do next. Great to catch up with Hassan French. One of the overused phrases in sports is we say, oh, what a great guy. He's a great guy. Oh, really great guy. And then the older you get and you're around some of these younger athletes, you say, what a great kid. And I know he's a, a senior in his early 20s, but Hassan French is one of the, he's a great kid. Wishing him all the best. Hopefully a great year for the Billikens as well. And we'll have a lot of coverage throughout the season. Some extended conversations right here on the Kill Coin Conversation. Make sure you subscribe. Go to iTunes, YouTube, wherever you get Spotify, wherever you get your podcast. Just get locked in. And whether we're talking to Whitey Herzog or a former colonel from Vietnam, a comedian, cardinal favorites like Ozzy Smith, doesn't matter. We'll have it all right here. The Kilcoin Conversation presented by Marie de Villa, Senior Living, Triad Bank, and AppliancedDiscounters.com. We'll talk to you again soon.